In this lecture, we're going to discuss how to test classes which have dependencies in isolation by using mocks and or spies. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to mock with fake classes. You're also going to know how to mock by extending classes and overriding functions. And you're also going to know how to mock by using a real instance and a spy. So let's imagine we have a login component which works with the auth service we tested in the previous lecture. So we have a very, very simple login component. We inject the auth service into the login component. The login component has a needs login function, which checks whether the auth service is authenticated. And we hide or show a login button depending on whether the needs login function returns true or false. So depending, so basically this login component depends on the auth service. And then by looking at the auth service, we can see it's exactly the same as the previous lecture. And also the test for this auth service is also exactly the same as the previous lecture. Now let's have a look at the test spec for our login component. We're importing login component and auth service. We're creating a test suite with described. In the before each function, I create a new auth service and I'm manually injecting it into a new login component just by passing it into the constructor as the first argument. And then after each test spec is run, we clean up any local storage and we also null out the service and component. And then in each of our test spec files, so we're checking to see if can login returns false when the user is not authenticated. In fact, it should be needs login. So by not setting any data in auth service, this is going to return false for is authenticated and therefore needs login is going to return true. And then to check to see whether the user is authenticated, we're setting some data in local storage. And then the needs login function from the component should then be false. Now, an important thing to realize about this code is that in order to test our login component, we need to know the inner workings of auth service. Why do we need to know the inner workings of auth service? Well, do we need to know the inner workings of auth service so that we can set the local storage, some, some data in local storage, so the auth service then returns true for is authenticated, so therefore changing the behavior of the needs login function. That's not very isolated, but it's also not a lot to ask for in this scenario. But imagine if login component required just a whole number of other dependencies in order to run. In order to test our login component, we would need to know the inner workings of all of those other dependencies and set up their required little bits of data in our before each function and also clean up their bits of data in the after each function. And we need to do all of that just to test our login component. So this results in something called tight coupling and our results being very brittle. And by brittle, I mean that they are likely to break easily. So for example, if the auth service changed how it stored the token from local storage to something else, perhaps cookies, then the login component test would break. Since this test is still setting the token via local storage and removing the token via local storage. This is why we need to test a class in isolation. We just only want to worry about login component and not about the myriad of other things the login component depends on. And we achieve this by mocking our dependencies. Mocking is the act of creating something that looks like the dependency, but is something we control in our test. And there are a few methods we can use to create mocks. Now, the first method I'm going to show you is mocking with fake classes. We can create a fake auth service called mocked auth service, which just returns whatever we want for our test. And since we're mocking our own auth service, we can even remove the import for auth service. 
that's a great sign that your test is, is a truly isolated test when you can remove all of the other imports and just include things that you're testing. So I create a class called mocked auth service. I give it a property of authenticated, which is false, a public property of authenticated. And I create my own is authenticated function, which just returns whatever the value of my authenticated property is. And then for the rest of our test, we just use mocked auth service instead of auth service. So our service variable is now of type mocked auth service. I create a new instance of mocked auth service. This mocked auth service is what gets injected into login component. And then I can actually in the after each function remove the clearing out of local storage because we're not we don't depend on local storage anymore. And then in each of our test specs, I can just make the service return whatever I want it to return by setting the service authenticated property to either true or false. And so in the first test, I can just set authenticated to false. This triggers the behavior that I expect. And in the second test, I can then remove the setting of some data in local storage. And I'm just going to set the service to return true. And now if we run our tests, we can see, well, we can see the, the original service tests are being run. And now again, our component tests are running and they're passing. So by using a fake mock auth service, we don't depend on the real auth service. In fact, we don't even need to import it into our specs. And it also makes our code less brittle. If the inner workings of the real auth service ever changes, our tests will still be valid. Our logging component tests will still be valid and still work. Okay, that's one way of mocking. Another way of mocking is by overriding functions. So sometimes creating a complete fake copy of a real class can be really complicated, time consuming and unnecessary. Instead, we can simply extend the real class and override one or more specific functions in order to get them to return the test responses we need. So in our example, we might create a mocked auth service which extends the real auth service. Now this might be useful if the real auth service had a bunch of other variables or properties or functions which we need in order for the mocked auth service to work. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to extend mocked auth service from our real auth service. And actually in order to do this, I need to import our mocked, our real auth service back into the file again. Now, why would we do this? Well, the main reason for doing it this way versus creating your own fake class is in order to mock this class, we also need to use various properties and functions that existed in auth service. Perhaps auth service is actually a really complicated class. Ours is really, really simple. So this hardly seems necessary. But if auth service is a very, very complicated class and creating a mocked auth service was just going to result in too many lines of code, we might choose to extend it and only override the function that we need to override. And then we could just simply run the test and it would function exactly the same as before. There we go. So now we can take a look at another method of mocking and that's by using real a real instance with something called a spy. Now a spy is a feature of Jasmine which lets you take an existing class or a function or an object and mock it in such a way that you can control what gets returned from functions. So let's rewrite our test to use a spy on a real instance of auth service instead. Now we don't need our mocked auth service anymore. Our service can actually hold a real instance of auth service. And that's what we actually inject into our component. But we don't need to care about the inner workings of auth service. We don't need to care about the fact that we need to set or delete any local storage. Instead, what we do is we create a spy 
on our service so that if the is authenticated function is called, the spy makes it return a variable we control. So I'm going to say it's going to return false. We do it like so we call spy on and then we pass it the object or the instance that we want to work on, that we want to spy on. And the second parameter is the function we want to spy on. So I want to spy on the is authenticated function. Okay. And then I write dot and dot return value is false. So what this is doing is it's saying spy on the service is authenticated function. If it ever gets called, return the value false. Okay. And we can do the same for the other test spec, but then just make it return true. By using the spy feature of Jasmine, we can make any function return anything we want. And therefore we don't really need to worry about the inner workings of the function. We just force it to return whatever value that we want. And another really cool feature of spies is that we can even check to see if the spied on function was in fact called. So we can add another expectation here. And we can expect service dot is authenticated. Now, this is just the, the, the function name. We're not calling the function with brackets. It's just the function name itself. And then we can say to have been called. So this is going to expect that the is authenticated function has actually been called by line 25. And we can do the same here as well. And now we can run our application and everything runs correctly. So to summarize, testing with real instances of dependencies causes our test code to know about the inner workings of other classes, which results in tight coupling and brittle code. But the goal is to test pieces of code in isolation without needing to know about the inner workings of their dependencies. And we do this by creating mocks. We can create mocks using fake classes, by extending existing classes, or by using real instances of classes, but taking control of them with spies.